Hey, I'm Nicholas and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to give you guys some product design and industrial design portfolio tips. So if you're applying to design school in the fall, maybe this will help. I hope it helps. I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to lay out your portfolio, what you should put in your portfolio, programs to help you make your imagery look better. I've been at University of Oregon School of Product Design in their BFA program for just about three years. Um, so I do know a little bit about how to make uh, an eye-catching portfolio. This isn't the end-all be-all way of making a portfolio um, that heavily depends on where you're applying to. So I can only answer for uh, what I have experience with. So I decided to break this video down into two main categories, which are going to be uh, the basic structure and layout and budget useful tools um, that really help you to actually put things in your portfolio and make it look good. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about, and in my opinion, the most important concept and idea that you need to understand is that the person who's looking at your portfolio is most likely not going to be uh, reading every single page. Um, they're probably going to be swiping, swiping through really quickly on their computer and just uh, briefly digesting what they just saw in that split two seconds. Um, so the way that you should present your information, your skills, um, is a chronological story of mostly imagery. Very little text and mostly imagery. This is because if the person is scrolling through all of these chronological images, it's gonna be easier, the, easier for them to understand rather than including uh, you know, blocks of text on each page so that they have to read to understand what you're doing. Um, you really wanna show your process uh, through images of your design, um, which is another thing that I wanna talk about. I wouldn't group your skills in categories. I wouldn't do that because it's always best to show your design process. I always say that you shouldn't show your skills, you need to show your process. How do you go through the steps? How do you think? And how do you get from point A to point B? The biggest question that I had when I was making my portfolio two or three years ago was how I was supposed to structure and lay it out and what stuff I was supposed to put in it. I didn't really have any product concepts because I had never really done anything like that before. And as a college applicant, you probably don't either. So the best thing to do is to grab your high school artwork, your sculptures, your any videos that you've made, your paintings, anything like that is really a good idea to put in your portfolio. Um, especially if you don't have a whole lot of uh, product development and you know design process examples. If you do, put that first because that's more relevant and then put all of the other stuff like paintings, you know, videos that you've made, all that stuff below um, because it, it helps. It shows that you're well-rounded. It shows that you're creative and you do lots of other stuff. What you might find is that it's difficult to kind of place those elements together because they might not visually flow. Organize those elements into groups. So I had uh, paintings, sculptures, and um, I think I had, uh, I think I had photography because I just got into photography at the time. If you have them, definitely put uh, product concepts, um, design process at the beginning because obviously that's the most relevant. Just put whatever creative stuff you've done in your portfolio and that's always a good bet. So kind of a stereotypical example of the layout of a portfolio would be the main hero image with some few props uh, for context, some initial sketches, digital models, so renders in CAD, and then some prototypes and user research and then a final product you probably won't have all that stuff to put in there like user research uh, prototypes if you're not making a physical product if it's just a concept you probably won't have a prototype um, but just in general 
that's kind of the layout and order of the design process. You're definitely going to be going back and forth between those different steps. So maybe you go from initial sketches to CAD models and then back to sketches because you want to change something. Definitely include that. You don't have to go pictures of sketches and then pictures of CAD programs and then you can't show pictures of sketches after that. You can do whatever you want, just make sure that it makes sense. Make sure that you're not grouping your skills um, and just make sure that you have somewhat of a design process to show. If you have no idea how to make those beautiful designer aesthetic renders, then that's what we're gonna talk about now. Next up is a category of uh, budget and free helpful tools and tips to make uh, your portfolio look visually amazing. I broke this category down into three other sections, which are sketching, uh, modeling and rendering, and prototyping. So first and foremost, I highly recommend that you get the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. Um, I use it every single day. You're gonna use it every single day as a design student, most likely. Um, I used it to design my portfolio and it's, it's amazing. I would, that's, that's the first thing I would do. Now, next I wanna talk about digital versus traditional design sketching. Personally, I use a Wacom tablet, one of those pad tablets that you put on a desk and then you look up at your screen and you draw. I also, I use that with a, a Autodesk sketchbook on my computer, which is free. Um, but obviously you have to pay for the tablet, which is, I think was around $50. Um, so in total, not bad. And I use it every single day. Uh, I do want an iPad and Apple Pencil. That'd be more convenient being able to draw on the screen itself, but those things are crazy expensive. So I've just been using my tablet with sketchbook on the computer and it works fine. Um, the major downside of that is the uh, hand-eye coordination. Uh, it's not easy. There's definitely a learning curve. When you're drawing and not being able to look out at your pen, at your hand, and you're having to look at a 90 degree angle, um, it's not easy sometimes, which is where Autodesk Sketchbook comes in. I used to draw in Photoshop, but now I draw in Sketchbook. The reason of ellipse tools. <laughs> Once you start learning about design sketching, um, ellipse tools are gonna be your best friend. If you're digitally sketching, you can press undo. Um, I don't think I need to explain why that's fun and extremely useful <laughs> because you can't undo when you're traditionally sketching. If you're used to traditional sketching, I would recommend that you put your photos because obviously you have to take a picture if you're traditionally sketching. I would put your photos on a white background and then put them in your portfolio. If you put kind of yellowish tinted sketches in your portfolio, it, it's not the most professional. It just doesn't look very good in my opinion. Um, so I would photo scan either with your phone or with, a, with your printer if you have one, um, and then just go into Photoshop with the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite and turn the image into black and white and then just try and get rid of the background with the, you know, with the curves and adjustment sliders as best you can. And then it'll look a million times better if you do that instead of leaving it as a kind of yellowish tinted image. But of course, the way that you do your design sketches doesn't matter as long as you can produce good sketches and you can present them in a nice way. I prefer digital because I'm better at it, but do whatever you're most comfortable with and remove the background, make the background white. That's 100% white background. <laughs> so once you have some sketches, it's always good to have some models to go along with it. Um, it's just part of the design process. You can get some modeling programs for free and they're very, very capable. Um, especially if you're just learning. I think modeling can scare people away sometimes just because it's very uh, precise and mathy, if you will. Product design and industrial design is very creative, but there is definitely uh, an engineering side to it as well. Um, and designers model using CAD all the time, so it's best to learn now. <laughs> 
I used to use a program called Blender, um, which I think is very, very popular um, because it's free and it's ridiculously capable. But I, I use a program called Fusion 360 now. The reason for that is because as you get into your design classes, you're probably gonna have to switch from uh, CG-based modeling to uh, CAD-based modeling. Um, and I'll probably make a video about the differences there and the processes I take to make the different models in a future video. But for now, just know that CG modeling is mainly for film and entertainment. CAD is more in the engineering field. If you're wanting to make a prototype or a physical model, then definitely go with CAD because it can be really difficult to make changes to a CG model when you've already made it. In a CAD program like Fusion 360, you've got a timeline and you can go back to these individual steps um, and you can alter these minuscule details and it's amazing, especially coming from a CG background in Blender. So if you're not too concerned about uh, being able to make physical prototypes, um, you can use Fusion 360 or Blender, both perfectly capable. Um, so I nothing against Blender, I love Blender, but if you want to make reiterative prototypes, 100% go for CAD and either Fusion 360 because it's free or SolidWorks, um, but that's paid. Um, and Max, do not have the capability of using SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so I am still using Fusion 360. As far as rendering goes in uh, CAD programs like Fusion, it's not the greatest, but if you want a realistic image like you see all over the internet, like on Pinterest, um, those classic aesthetic designer renders, um, you might want to look into a program called Keyshot. I'm pretty sure Keyshot is the industry standard for rendering. It's used in product shots, commercials, all that sort of stuff. You can come out with some beautiful, realistic renders. I am probably gonna come out with a video about what's called PBR rendering, which is what Keyshot and Blender is based off of. As far as tutorials go, if you've never used these programs before, for Fusion 360, I would go on YouTube and search for the channel called Product Design Online. For Blender, 100,000% uh, search YouTube for Blender Guru. Um, he is basically the king of Blender tutorials online. Something that I didn't include in my college application portfolio was a physical prototype that I actually went through and made. You actually can get a prototype of an idea that you have and that really helps to elevate your portfolio compared to other people. And the way that you can do this is not through purchasing a 3D printer and it's not through paying thousands of dollars to have your product injection molded for a portfolio. Um, you do it through 3D printing services and these have gotten ridiculously cheap and fast in the past few years. One or actually two companies that um, I've been looking into are Shapeways and Make Labs. Um, Shapeways, I think, is the most popular 3D printing service. Lots of materials to choose from, uh, super high quality, a bit more on the expensive side, I will admit. Another one is uh, called Make Labs. They are another very credible 3D printing service, and they have a lot less materials to choose from but they are also much less expensive. So just be aware though that if you do wanna use these 3D printing services, you're gonna to have to pay for taxes depending on where you live and service fees and shipping costs. The last tool that I wanted to very briefly talk about is this book called uh, The Material Source Book for Design Professionals. This is completely unnecessary for design school applicants but I've been using this thing religiously for all of my school projects because it has such detailed information about every single material you can possibly think of that exists on planet Earth. Um, and you just can't get this kind of information from a Google search. 
Um, I'll link it below. Unfortunately, I can't share it for free, but it's well worth the price. I got it on Amazon for $70, $80 or so, um, and it's probably the, the best thing, the best tool that I have for developing concepts of products. I hope you found this video useful. I was really excited to make this video because I'm a nerd when it comes to portfolio development. Um, I've been developing my own portfolio to apply for some internships, and I really wanted to uh, learn more about how you can make them more beautiful and stand out in front of your competition. Um, and just let me know if you have any questions, um, whether you think you should go for digital versus traditional design sketching, because I love talking about that. Um, and just comment down below whatever you feel you want to talk about. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.